The effects of temperature are everywhere in our daily lives. I bet that you often check the temperature outside before going out. Or do you feel the heat from your smartphone when you charge it, or when you overuse it? If you heat a slice of pizza in a microwave, will you be annoyed by the uneven temperature of the food? Besides these daily examples, in fact, heat is generated or utilized by many engineered structures or machines. The performance of these structures may depend greatly on the temperature experienced during their operation. Conducting heat transfer analysis allows us to understand the temperature distribution over the domain, which can help us evaluate whether or not specific requirements are met for the product. Before talking about what is heat transfer, let's have a quick review of a structural analysis with force and displacement. You will see why it's needed very soon. In a typical structural analysis, for example, here we're putting this simple paper clip. The input is the load we applied on the edge of the paper clip, and we're looking for the displacement as the unknown caused by this load. Of course, for dynamic analysis, we're also looking for the derivatives of displacement, which are velocity and acceleration. As structural analysis relates force to displacement, Heat transfer is no more than the study of the relationship between heat flow and temperature. For heat transfer, you will see a similar but different governing equation. The variables are different, but the format is similar. On the left side of the equation, we have matrices multiplied to vectors. The vectors are our unknowns. And on the right side, it's a single vector representing the load. In heat transfer problem, our unknowns are temperature and its time derivative, and our input, the so-called load, is heat flow. With this governing equation, a simple heat transfer problem statement could be, when we turn on the oven, how long does it take for the cookies to reach 190 Celsius degree? Here, the oven is the heat source, and the temperature of our cookie is what we want to determine. Since we're going to study heat transfer, let's first answer the question, what is heat and what's the format of heat? Heat is a form of energy. It is produced when a rising temperature causes atoms and molecules to move faster. As a form of energy, the unit of heat is joule. For heat flow, the quantity Q in the governing equation is the amount of heat that is transferred per unit of time. Then, naturally, the unit for heat flow is joule per second, which is also called watt. I believe temperature is a much more familiar quantity to all of us. There are various temperature scales though. The most commonly used scales are Celsius scale, Kelvin scale, Fahrenheit scale, and Rankine scale. For Celsius and Fahrenheit, you might see them often from weather report, depending on which country you are living in. For Kelvin scale and Rankine scale, they are mostly used in astronomy and theoretical physics. Temperature values in Kelvin and Rankine scales are always positive, because they use absolute zero as zero Kelvin and zero degree Rankine. Absolute zero is the coldest conceivable temperature. It's a theoretical condition at which no more energy can be removed from the system. There is a corresponding relationship between Kelvin and Celsius scale. That is, a temperature difference of 1 Kelvin is defined as equal to 1 degree Celsius. Same relationship between Rankine scale and Fahrenheit scale. 1 Rankine change equals to 1 degree Fahrenheit change. Now, let's have a look of what kind of application requires heat transfer analysis. In many cases, heat is the enemy and we want to reduce or limit it from the mechanical system. For example, when the computer is running, excessive heat may damage the electric components. Or for a car engine, the overheating of the components can be a safety hazard or lead to other issues. Heat transfer analysis provides us an efficient way to control such overheat. Sometimes, heat transfer analysis is also needed for the design of an insulated space. For example, the question can be, how long can the cooler keep your beverage cold? Or how quickly should the pizza in an insulated bag be delivered before it is no longer hot? 
or even for a house with insulation, what temperature can be maintained in the living space during a harsh winter? Of course, heat is not always the enemy. It can be an important energy source that we want to utilize. For example, without heat, how can we bake delicious cookies? For the engineer to design an efficient oven, we need to understand the temperature distribution within it, so that to make the most efficient use of heat. Or for the solar energy industry, the heat from the sun is transformed to electricity energy. So in design of solar panels, our goal is to maximize the sun's incident energy while minimizing heat loss. As we mentioned, the effects of temperature are everywhere, and the applications of heat transfer are definitely not limited to what we have shown here. Therefore, heat transfer is a very important subject for engineers to be familiar with.